WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. It is uh, summertime around here. I'm looking forward to this one because uh, I've been eating a lot of crab cakes on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery in conjunction with our friends at Goodwill and Window Nation. I got my Window Nation uh, working my, uh, uh, my my June Pride Window Nation shirt here. I'm going to have my July Window Nation Pride shirt, my flag coming up for the 4th of July. But uh, we're having the show at State Fair this week. We're going to be in Catonsville. Don Muller is going to be joining us. Uh, we do have some great guests, including Dr. Anthony Jenkins from Coppin State, another one of our partners. Of course, we uh, put the Eagles games on the radio here today in 1570, as well as next week, we're going to be at Costas, sort of a getaway before we begin the 31 crab cakes in 31 days. Um, I'm probably going to have the crab imperial because I'm avoiding crab cakes for a couple of weeks, but not the crabs. So we'll be at Costas next week. So um, this young lady wrote to me and wondered if I knew who her husband was. And I'm like, um, you know, before I got thrown out of the oars, I was sort of Mr. Oriole around here. I'm getting back after that a little bit with our Peter Principal stuff. And uh, obviously the Purple Rain one and two series as I eat crab cakes all over the state. Bonnie Habian joins us now. And listen, uh, there were Miss Orioles back in the day. There were Oriole wives. I didn't know about the Oriole girlfriends. I don't know anything about that. I was just a kid. <laughs> okay. But I did have Oriole wives sign my glove with Wild Bill and the Oriole bird yep. sign my glove before he assaulted me in 2006. So I had all sorts of things uh, back in my childhood. But, you know, I didn't think, Bonnie, about this part of it. That like a guy would come here and pitch and meet a girl. And then like 30 years later, they'd have like a life together. I don't think of displaced female Baltimoreans that were squired away by baseball and pitchers <laughs> and catchers and outfielders. But you come at this on. Welcome home. First things first. Thank you. Right Thank you. And you're a listener to the program and the podcast and a follower. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Well, thank you. I, I laugh because I, I think in this day and age to have a Miss Oriole, you know, people really find that quite entertaining. I still have my big poster that was, you know, sponsored by Miller Lite. It was this contest where you had to go to all these different bars and drum up votes. So I look back now. What and year was this? 1987. But um, yeah, so 1987, I win this contest. And one of the rules is, of course, you can't fraternize with the players. Well, I'm like, well that's no problem. You know, I mean, I'm not. It's a cheerleader rule, too. Well, no, there was no, I wasn't like a- No, but in football, if I'm saying that's- Oh, is it the same? Oh, God. You can't, if you're a cheerleader, you're not supposed to mess around with the players. And then there's also the, if you're in the media, you're not supposed to mess around with the players. I know 20 women from the media who marry ball players. From the well, media. I mean, you're, you're there every day. I mean, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a little hard to, to kind of- I guess, police that, right? Because before you know it, you're there every day. I would sit next to the players when I would sign my poster. You get to know them a little bit. You get to know, you know, a little bit about them. I was 22. He's 23. I mean, you know, it just was kind of aligned there. He's cute. So, Go ahead and say it. He's cute. Yeah, absolutely. And right. the uniforms, yeah. I always love the uniforms. It's still to this day. You know, he, he currently uh, coaches and he, I got to see him in his uniform the other night. So I'm like, All right, this is too good, you know, 30 years later. But little did I think that I would end up meeting, falling in love, marrying, and then going on this journey, which was, was quite interesting. You see the sunny side of baseball when you're outside, but you don't understand how difficult it is once you actually live and breathe it and move from different places. And it's, it's tough. And then once baseball's over, and you're you in love, know, and you're in love. Yeah. And he's not going to be a pitcher when he's 50. You knew that. No, you don't know how long it's going to, going to last. I mean, you know, he actually had something happen to him during that time where he had a third degree separation when I was dating him you know, sleigh riding. And that was something unheard of. And how he rehabbed himself back was amazing. And then ended up being traded, you know, to the Yankees, which is a whole nother story in itself. But yeah, good times. 87 was a tough year. The Orioles didn't do so well. 88 was even worse. Um, but it was a really magical time. Memorial Stadium. What a great time for a 22 year old just out of college. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a million Orioles in my history, and, and Bonnie Habian's here, her husband John uh, pitched for the Birds. Those of you who don't know, it was 35 years ago, so I guess you have to be of a certain age to remember, um, but I am of that age, and I've been doing this for 31 years, and you know, I, I don't... I've had wives on, charity, canned food drives, Christmas, like, uh, and... Phil Jackman, uh, I want to bring his name up because uh, he's in failing health as well, and he's a father figure to me. Phil covered the er early 70s Orioles, right? So his daughter, Michelle, uh, uh, works for the National Kidney Foundation. She's a frequent guest. She's a lifelong pal of mine, rock and roll buddy of mine, Caps fan, Nationals fan. She's a sports fan. She's my age. 
Um, and she grew up with her father covering the Orioles yeah, and yeah. living in Florida in February and March in Miami back in the 70s when it was Belanger, Crowley, all of those people lived in Baltimore for years. They, they raised their families here in Lutherville and Timoni and Palmer of that era, that boot pal, that era, Merv Rettman, the early 70s. So the thing I learned very early on, and, and I learned this when you were Miss Orioles, this is about 86, 87, 88. Um, Phil and I would go to a lot of Caps games together during that era. And you remember the Caps were very good. Sure. Mike Gardner and Brian Murray, they were, they were great teams, playing the Islanders and winning and losing big series. And I was a hockey guy, but a baseball guy too. So in April and May, it would sort of, you know, overlap. And in 87 and 88, no offense, team wasn't that great. I do right. remember all that as well. But Phil said to me, the mo and he was, he was from Worcester, Mass. He said, the most important part. <laughs> Good accent from there. Of, of a ball club. <laughs> well, he, he said that, that the wives, that the wives on the early six, the late 60s, early 70s, all of the wives, black wives, white wives from all over the country, they're there, they're trapped, their husbands are in Chicago, you know, Milwaukee and wherever for Kansas City for a road trip, you're home 10 days, that the wives and the friendships of the wives, he told me this as a kid, was integral to the success of the early 70s Orioles. And this is a, this is a, grizzled sports writer who was a you know kind of a cranky curmudgeonly kind of fellow yeah. this is what he said he he knew the value of the wives well yeah I don't know you know I look back now and I think I was just so young at the time I was just trying to to survive newly married going from place to place but I also always had my other career goals and so I was you know at the same time getting another degree trying to think of what I was going to do to prepare because I knew at any moment that gravy train could stop Really, I mean, you go from this life of very interesting, you know, um, highs and lows, uh, travel, um, just a different lifestyle, and then very quickly it's gone. I mean, you think about it, what is the average span? I don't even know, but by the time we were 32, 33, had a newborn, you know, I, I was back full time working um, and have since, you know, launched and, and gone through a pretty successful career. So, I do know as well, at least this is the last stat I saw, those who are married in baseball, once baseball ends, there's an even higher divorce rate from my understanding than just regular divorce rates because the, the life change is so great. Bonnie Habian's our guest. Uh, she reached me a couple weeks ago uh, through uh, uh, John Sheck and a ho whole bunch of other people that, you know, that it, it is, um, it's quite a fraternity, the baseball fraternity, right? And, and I keep company with lots and lots of people over the years and lost so many friends over the years. Uh, and we lost Goose last week on the Raven side. We're getting to be that age for all of this stuff. Um, we spend a couple years in Baltimore as a pitcher and you take a wife with you the rest of your life from Baltimore, right? Miss Oriole. <laughs> um, Give, give me that journey about meeting John and being Miss Oriole and back in the 80s, because I don't know how long Miss Oriole lasted. I do remember it sort of, but right. but it, it probably was short life. Hey, halter tops were in the 70s, too. Man, I got pictures of all that. Right. Um, and I was a junior Oriole back then. And, you know, late. 70s. I remember that program. I remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, I think I believe I was the last Miss Oriole. And it was, was really nice is that I was there for 87. And as opposed to doing another contest, they understood. They knew I was you know, dating John, they knew it was kind of legit. They invited me back for a second year. So I felt like really proud and great that they, they knew enough about me. You and served two I terms? I did. I did. Oh. I was 70, 87 and 88. So it was really just doing PR. I would go around to this, the, the radio station super early in the morning to talk about the upcoming promos, whether they were giving away, away coolers or, you know, whatever promo night it was. And then I would go to the bullpen parties. They used to have huge bullpen parties with corporations back then. They'd bring out a player. I'd be signing my, my poster. They'd be signing their, you know, balls and cards or whatever else they had at that time. And then I would have to go around to a lot of the different promos if they had it at a DC um, sports store, whatever corporations wanted to have. You were a female ambassador to the ball. Yes, a female ambassador. And yeah, that? so, and, and, and the organization was so great, you know, to, to support it at the time. Again, it was, if you look back now, I think about my poster and kind of what I was wearing this jersey with a bat behind my head and, you know, all dolled up with the 80s hairdo. Uh, but I got to tell you, it was one of the best summers of my life. And plus, I got to meet my husband, which after that happened, kind of changed everything, right? I looked at things differently um you know and then then you take on this new life of of just kind of saying I don't know where I'm going to be every year but we'll, we'll try and plan around it and hopefully you're not going to be traded mid-year which happened several times when 
different teams were in the race. So it was definitely a journey up until around, um, I think back now when release was right when I was pregnant and had just given birth in 97 with my daughter, who is now 25. Um, he was with the Mets at that point and that was it. And then after that, we took, packed up from Maryland, moved up to New York, Long Island, where he's from. Um, I went back to work and started this, you know, 25 year career, uh, chief marketing officer now, and I just wrote a book, my first book. Uh, so I've taken this kind of different path, but my husband still is in baseball. He, he ended up going and coaching for Hofstra um, and is now with the Kansas City Royals coaching in their minor league system. So we still live apart. We still have this kind of baseball life where he's gone seven months of the year. I'm here. My daughter That's a fascinating. Yeah. You know, that, that's a thing about baseball. I'll give you a fun story of my child. Bonnie Habian's here, uh, wife of John Habian. If you're an old school Oriole fan, you're rummaging through your baseball cards like I was the other day <laughs> uh, after Tony Saragusa died. Um, it's just the baseball life so interesting to me. I remember in the late 90s, mid, mid to late 90s, 90. Seven, eight, nine. I had gotten to know Cal Ripken pretty well. I, I, uh, I started my radio career in 91 when Camden Yards opened into 92. So the day Camden Yards opened, April of 92, I was on the air. So I was at the ballpark. There were no Ravens here for all those years, right? So it was just baseball is the most important thing. Sold out, 3.6 million people to strike, all that. And, you know, Cal's, <laughs> Cal's the biggest star in the world, right? Yeah. And, or, or in the baseball world, certainly. And I remember saying something to him. Hey, Cal, I'm going to Ocean City um, this weekend. You know, you know, you have anything you like in Ocean City? And he said to me, he's a grown ass man. He's in his 30s. He's Cal Ripken. He's from Aberdeen. He's like, I've never been to Ocean City. <laughs> I know. How can you how can you be? So I, I don't even know how to punchline that. I only yeah, and I say, thought that was all there when, was. When would Cal go to That's Ocean right. City? Yeah, I mean, he, he's a guy who famously hasn't had a day off from February 15th through October. In November, why would he go to, you know what I mean? He has three months off a year, a, like a little bit, you know. the. But people think of the guy on the baseball card and they have no idea how many loads of laundry need to get done and things that weird stuff of living out of bags. And it's just yeah. a different, different, different life that even as a kid, I, my last name's Aparicio. I come at it honest. I'm here because of baseball and Venezuela and all that. Uh, but being around it a little bit in the early nineties, I saw it was it completely limiting. You know, baseball players are very focused on, they, they weren't focused on the world. They're focused on pitching <laughs> because that's yeah. that. And I learned very, very early on that a lot of things that you take for granted, they make money, they're rich, they have pretty wives, all that. that <laughs> there's nothing normal about it that, that we no, would judge it as a no. normal life. I do think it brings a certain bond too. I feel like, you know, we're, we're very good friends with uh, Bill. Bill Ripken was our best man. John was best man in his wedding. So I, I may grew up and kind of went through the- John must have a hell of a sense of humor then. He does. And, and I love that family. <laughs> their, their children are my four godchildren. Love them. They are like the best. And we still, you know, there's a connection there for life. Connection there for life. I mean, it doesn't matter how long it is that we've been separated and we haven't seen each other. You get back and you just reminisce and remember things. And there's just a deep, a deep love there, you know, especially when you've gone through so much. Um, but talk about playing in different areas from Baltimore to New York. When you go to Yankee Stadium, I mean, you could either one one mistake. The next day, I, I didn't even want to read the newspaper. You know, I'd be like, oh, God, this is bad. Or worse but, than that, know. when you're sitting in the stands, because Baltimore wasn't like that. No, 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 it's still not like that. Place. Nobody stands up in Baltimore and yells, you suck at anybody right. on the home team ever. And certainly, yeah, there's a lot of places you can play. New York, Philadelphia, where Boston, where maybe it's not as kind. Oh, no, not as kind. Now, if you, if you win in New York, oh my God, it's got to be larger than life. But if you lose in New York, that is a tough place. It's a really rough place. I lived there for 25 years, lived and worked there, lived in Long Island, worked in and out of the city and on Long Island. So it's definitely a different beast. And they are definitely rough uh, at times on their, you know, on their, uh, their, their pro teams. But what a magical place. What a magical place to experience too. I mean, it's just larger than life. 
you're up in Long Island. They, they fired my boy Trotzy last a couple. Of, yeah, I mean, come on. You don't fire Barry Trotz. They're yeah. tough up on Long Island. But yeah. you're, you're writing and your marketing background and you're like real life beyond Miss Oriole. And being Miss Oriole was probably you learned a lot about well, marketing and hand to hand marketing and the value of a brand, right? Absolutely. And that's where I got my first job in radio, which at the time was WMIX 106.5. I'm not sure if that radio station is there, but it was a 50,000 watt station. I was 22. And from going into the various different stations to talk about the promos, you know, I became friendly with their, their GM. And next thing you know, I have um, a love songs to show that I'm doing. So I get all of these letters, mostly from people in prison, uh, to do this love song show that was really popular for a couple of years. So one one thing led to the next. And I think you're right. That's probably where the love of marketing started was with the Orioles. Were you the original Delilah? Were, were you the original Fran, no, Fran Lang? No, I wasn't. I used to listen to Delilah all the time to get some pointers. I remember listening to her. My my shift was over at like midnight. And I remember driving home and listening to her uh, very late at night. And, you know, just, uh, I think, is she still around? There is. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we no. have Fran Lane here. Fran, Fran was the late night, like, here. And, and same concept. Oh, Bonnie, he loves you. I'll send this Air <laughs> Supply song out to you. I know, I know. And you'd get the same people calling in all the time. But I was floored at how many <laughs> came from prison. Our largest listenership <laughs> was from people from prison. Like, this is just so interesting. From a sociology standpoint, really interesting. So, again, Love songs. From marketing. They, they suck us all in. Bonnie Habian is here. She's still John Habian's wife. Is that weird to say you're the baseball player's wife all these years later? You still, you okay with that? Oh, I'm fine. Well, I do, I do learn in Baltimore. They're very interested in it. And I do find in any conversation, once they find out that you played baseball, conversation switches. <laughs> you know, right. Right. Uh, it's same thing when you do radio too. People are like, "Hey, have you met Cal Ripken? Did you know? You know? Do you know Ray Lewis? You know?" So yeah, it's a little bit of that. I I would agree. Now, you're writing. I'm a writer by. I mean, back in the '80s when your husband was pitching, I was working at the Evening Sun doing all of the. I, I typed Habian's name every night in 1987 and 88. Statistics, ERA, walks, all that stuff was inputted manually and made mistakes because I'm human and. To air as human, uh, sometimes you know, especially on the lottery numbers, which so I. You were in that press box. Anymore. You were in that press box. Uh, very much so. Great uh, Miss, snacks Miss, there. <laughs> Miss Helen would fry up those crab cakes and give yeah. them to me on crackers, and they had draft beer that was usually a little flat, but I wasn't complaining because I wasn't no. even twenty-one. No, I remember mint chocolate chip ice cream. I get. I mean, oh, the fruit. it was green. Yeah, That's... out of the big, out of the big tub. Yep. Yeah. See, yep, that, that you had to like climb the curve. steps to get the crab cake, though. You had to go yep. up the stairs, Sometimes right? they were there. Sometimes they weren't, you know? They, sometimes it. they'd run out. It always smelled like fried f French fries and yes. fried crab cakes. And they had hamburgers and hot dogs and they crab did. cakes. That's it. Don't add. Well, that nachos, too, because Brooks needed those. For the I remember the nachos. I remember that, too. See that? We see we That's we were funny. cut from this. We were in the same room together, Bonnie. I just you were you were Miss Oriole and you were too old for me at 22. You know what I mean? You were yeah. like three years older than me. Way yeah, too you're old right. for me. You're right. In, in those days. That's you know? so funny. You, you were you were one of the types that was gonna date the ball players, I guess. So I Bonnie, don't know. It ended up that way. It wasn't <laughs> planned, but you know what? Hey, it's okay. <laughs> Tell us about your writing and about your family, because I know you that you've taken a lot of this to heart, and I'm getting back out and writing. I'm releasing Purple Rain One and I Two. See. Folks can read. Uh, you know, my books, I'm also going to be releasing the Peter principles. Um, one at a time. I can only do one crab cake at a time. I'm doing the crab cake tour, but I'm getting my writing out because you know, I'm 53 and like I got, I've written a lot of this down, but I feel very, very compelled to begin writing again. I sit here and talk all day and I tell my stories and like, whatever, that's cool. But there's something about writing that when you, it's your art and what you love to do that it's cathartic. And I need the, I, I need the therapy part of it. I, you know, it's funny. You say that it's almost like therapy and it is not for the faint of heart because it is a marathon. And I have such respect for all authors now, because for the most part, everyone told me, do not expect to make money on this book. And I'm like, yeah, okay. What are the stats? I start looking at the stats. I'm like, holy bananas. Why I'm even going down this path. It's a passion it's, play. It has it's, to it's be. It's a passion. And, and I find, and I always tell people, you know, I, I try to be very motivational in most things that I do. If you love something and you're good at it, and you're passionate about it. 
other things will come from it. So just follow it. So, you know, my mom is just, is just a very funny lady. And over the years, she started giving us material of her sayings. And before you know it, my nieces, nephews, and I, we were all kind of putting these things together. I'd get texts over the years, start cracking it up. And, and, and people said, you know, you should start writing a book about that. I said, well, maybe I will. I started maybe the concept about 10 years ago and then really got pen to paper about five years ago. And you know how this is. You go through developmental editors. You have to find, are you going to do traditional publishing, you know, self-publishing? And then you get all of that together. And that is almost the easy part. The hard part afterwards is getting the marketing out. So anyhow, I, I published my first book just three weeks ago. Um, my mom, who lives in, in Maryland still, she lives in Bel Air, born and raised in Baltimore. What high school did you go to? What's that? What high school did you go to? You know high what? School, I, Bel Air High? Seymour oh, High? I did. Oh, I went to John Carroll. You went I went to John, to John Carroll. Carroll. No, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm just asking. That would tell everybody where you're from. If you say I, yeah, went, I went to John, John Carroll, Carroll. from Bel Air. But I went to Hazelwood Elementary School in St. Clements in grade school. And Hazelwood, oh. probably. Yeah. So I know you went, you were in Dundalk and I was. Yeah, you're, you know, I was debating whether that's Overly or Rosedale or Fuller. All around there. Rosedale, St. Clements, Gardenville, um, Hazelwood. Okay, so, there you go. There you go. Yeah, fair, fair so enough. Hazelwood in still over there. Absolutely. I know. Yeah, it is. yeah. So um, I, bub I published the book on June 6th, her birthday, her 91st birthday, I'm going to be doing a Barnes and Noble um, uh, book signing August 6th in Bel Air. So, you know, so it's in Bel Air on August 6th. I want everybody to know that. August okay. 6th, Bel Air, please come. I'm going to pray that my mom's there. She's really frail at this point. And anyone who has pa aging parents, they know how hard it is. Uh, when they suffer from dementia, but you have to find a sense of humor in it all or you'll, you'll go crazy. So um, yeah, so it's been a real journey, but so much of in that book is Ocean City, you know, Baltimore, my mom growing up, um, just so many memories of things that were of that age. Well, you must have had cool parents if you were Miss Oriole, right? I mean, at least you, you know what I mean? They had you, you, you remember 83, you remember 79, right? I mean, you, you're like, you, you're at it honest. Like you grew up really an Oriole fan to be in that game. Oh, right? I remember driving in the, you know, old Malibu with the vinyl seats. You're, you'd get out of, from the pool. We belonged to this pool. And I remember getting in my back, sticking to the vinyl seats. And all my father would have on is W. BAL, right? And the static would come in and out of the, the radio. Huge Oriole fan. So when my father was so happy, and, and I got to laugh because part of this Miss Oriole contest is you had to vote in liquor stores. Oh, he was in there stuffing those. <laughs> King boxes. Liquor's right down the street, baby. Yeah. He was stuffing those boxes for, for his daughter. And so when I, I won the contest, the, the um, he was beyond excited. And then when I married a player, are you kidding me? That's like any father's dream in Baltimore, right? So I look back now and I think at the time I didn't realize it, but now I'm thinking, wow, that was a pretty cool thing for, for dad. Oh, I, no doubt about that. Bonnie Habian is our guest. Her husband is John. He pitched for the Birds, Yankees. We'll talk about that and uh, several others. Uh, you can go uh, look up his stats and look up her book and uh, find her up at the Barnes & Noble on August the 6th. Bel Air girl up on Long Island. Uh, Long Island. Doing, yeah, doing things up there. Well, hey, I really appreciate that um, that you reached. Uh, we obviously have a commonality of remembering the crab cakes in Memorial Stadium press Absolutely. box. Absolutely. Uh, at least we'll, we'll always have that. Uh, you know what? I, I do the crab cake tour now. <laughs> and it, it, so people always ask me about crab cakes. And that crab cake was like my mother's it was literally claw meat put together with mustard and some old bay and fried deep fried it's what we served on subs in dundalk if you got a crab cake sub you got a couple little hockey pucks fried hockey pucks delicious delicious but not gucci not jumbo no. lump not served with any tarragon or lemon or you know any sort of great poupon or any nothing <laughs> fancy you don't need anything on it if it's a good crab cake but, but wait a minute you're, you're doing no one serves it that way anymore. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's one place, a place called um, ah, I lost the name of it. It's in Annapolis. I ate a crab cake there, Davis's Pub. Um, they still serve it that way, but it smells, tastes just like the Memorial Stadium crab cake. And the Memorial Stadium crab cake is hard to find because it it wasn't Gucci, literally, and everybody tries to serve a $30 crab cake now because that's what's sort of expected out of this. I think the you're right. I, on, you know? Well, you have to try uh, Box Hill, right? I'm sure you know of Box Hill. I know of Box Hill. Okay, I was going to say, because that, yeah, I just was wondering, because that's, you, you know, if you're going on this tour, I'm like, you can't miss that one. <laughs> 
I, I prefer local Maryland, but that's just me. You know, I mean, no offense, but uh, that's so I, I have been doing true blue, trying to find people that get their crab and source their crab from Maryland. So I've been trying to feature them as much as anything, especially the, the picking issues over in the Eastern Shore. So I'm all and about no, I'm getting up to Bel Air. Barry Glassman and I are going to go get a crab cake. I've got a spot. I'm working on it. I've also got some spots up in Cecil County. I'm working northern Baltimore County in August. So I will. I will be eating crab cakes everywhere. And what I'm really trying to do is go to places I've never been in August. That's so that's going to be sort of a theme for me is 31 unfamiliar crab cakes in 31 days. And I know you'll appreciate this. I got thirsty last year when I did 30. So I'm doing 31 breweries this year, too, just because you got to wash it. <laughs> I know Bill Ripken would Missouri will be right there next to you. If she Bill was still, Light, baby. Still yeah, alive. yeah. <laughs> you and Mike March and, and oh, my yes. God, back in the yes. day. Exactly. That's who, like, I had to, like, work with. I think that's who my paycheck came from, to be honest. Absolutely. A bond distributing. See, I mean, I, I know things, Bonnie Havy. That's why they kept me around here 31 years, all right? Yeah, we have a lot in common. More, than, me, I, more than I expected. Tell me about the book and uh, where to, the name, where to find it, how yeah. best to, to get it. And obviously, come and visiting with you on August 6th, some storytelling too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a funny memoir. You can get it on Amazon. Just, you know, it's called The World According, World According to Bass. Best is an unfiltered, uh, funny memoir with life lessons from my 90 year old mom. That's the story. Um, and it is pretty hysterical, but it's also kind of anyone that has aging parents will laugh, they will cry. I've already got over 100 reviews, which I'm like floored about, which I'm you know, very pleased with. But um, yeah, that's the name of the book, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, going to be August 6th at Barnes & Noble in Bel Air. Please come see me. Come see my mom. Anyone that worked with my mom in Macy's and Hex, she would just be you know, over the moon to see Where her. did she work in Macy's and Hex? Which one? The Bel Air? Yeah, she did. She worked at the mall in Bel Air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't out for journey tickets in 80, 83 uh, at, at the mall at Bel Air at the Hex. So maybe, oh, maybe so she's the one that sold me the tickets in the seven. Throw. You never she know. Th she was thankful. She's dressed up with her heels and everything. That may have been her. <laughs> so, yeah, my, my mom passed uh, five years ago, and uh, my mom was 98. My mom wanted to live to be 100, but she was 98. And my mom, her mind was 1 million percent fine to the very, very end, to the last hour she was alive. But, you know, frailty, she was a smaller woman. But uh, I have video of the last 10 years of my, wife, of my mom's life um, where we – we, we dined with her every Saturday morning. We ate at an IHOP on Merritt Boulevard over in Dundalk, and we sat with her. And I would, in the days when she was feeling frisky, I'd put the, the video on and just have her story tell. I have hours, hours, hours of her. I've not Priceless. watched one minute of it because I think Priceless. it would bust. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. But it's there, and my mother was hilarious, and my people love my mother. When my mother died, we had to close down the whole funeral home and we put a beer tap in the back that we had to get special permission from the folks. Thank <laughs> you, Connolly. Thank you, Terry Connolly, because uh, Connolly's didn't want to make that a thing at beer at funerals. But for my mom, because my mom was famous for drinking beer, which maybe there's a reason I'm doing the breweries and all. And maybe that's my mom talking yeah. to me. But but. I mean, I have such appreciation for what you've done for your mom and to, to pay tribute to her funnyisms. My mom's funnyisms come up all the time because my mom had a language all of her own. You know what I mean? My mom they, had they words do. that weren't, weren't words. They do. And, and what wisdom they can give us, because I got to tell you, in this day and age, the way the world is pretty crazy now, it's kind of nice to go back and look at something that's a little grounded. And you say, oh my God, how thankful I am to be living in this generation as opposed to 50, 60 years ago. It's just, you know, the, the evolution of time has just surpassed anything I, you know, and, and technology surpassed anything any of us would have imagined. But if you go back to that kind of roots of what it was like in 1950, 1960, simpler times, family times, there's something to be learned from that. Yeah, if your mom worked at the Hartford Mall in the 80s and 90s, I'm sure she learned a lot there, too. <laughs> she did. She loved it. <laughs> hey, Bonnie, I appreciate it. A very nice visit. Thanks for reaching out. Uh, my thanks to John uh, down in, uh, I believe he's in Nashville these days, uh, giving him a shout out as well. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Uh, stop by. And uh, when you're in August, I'm going to be having a crab cake every day. Uh, the 6th of August, I think I'm just getting back from Western Maryland, which is also beautiful. Um, you know, I, I, I brought up Cal about not going to Ocean City. I'm the idiot that at 52 had never been to Deep Creek Lake. I went last I've year. I've never been either. Yeah. It's our first stop. 
this this time because we loved it that much and we need to go back. So um, we're 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 doing the crab cake tour in reverse. We started in Ocean City and work west. This time we're going west and working our way east. But I hope to uh, to see you and uh, give you an elbow bump up there in Hartford County. We get a crab cake with Barry Glassman. Maybe b- drag Bill out for a crab cake. You got it. <laughs> you got it, Bonnie Habian. Uh, Wife of John Habian, but I should say, you know, he's your your husband. Uh, John Habian's now husband of author Bonnie Habian. I um, like that. Well, there you go. Yeah, I knew you'd like that. <laughs> you can find her out on Amazon or find her at the Barnes and Noble on August the sixth, up in um, with Buzz Battaglia, the late great Buzz Battaglia. Metro Auto Parts and Herbert Salmos would say Bel Air. So she'll be up in there on August the 6th. I'm Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore. Positive.